hello, this is Candy from eyes2jesus.blogspot.com and welcome to my detailed 2018 planner setup. This is likely going to be the most detailed planner setup or planner tour that I've ever given. And I'm also, for the first time, going to go into great detail on how I plan. How I plan my days, what my strategy is, what I use my monthly pages for, etc. So, what planner am I going into 2018 with? I am in a unicorn that I'd almost given up hope on. A unicorn. I have been trying to get this planner for years now. And I finally got an opportunity, saw the opportunity, and was able to get it and got it. I am in this. This is a Franklin Covey classic size vintage binder and it's called the Marbella. It is one of the few snap close unstructured planners that Franklin Covey makes. Most of their planners are structured. Some of their vintage planners were unstructured and this is one of them. And uh, I have learned over the years that I very much prefer an unstructured planner. Thus why I like the Daytimer Malibu so much. So this beautiful Marbella uh, came to me with an inch and one eighth diameter rings. I took those out because remember most, not all, but most Franklin Coveys have removable rings. You just need an Allen wrench or, you know, take out the hex screws. Alright, so I just uh, got out my Allen wrench and I took out those uh, inch and eighth rings and I replaced them with uh, gold oval inch and a half rings. And uh, they work in the footprint fabulously. This is my absolutely favorite footprint. It's where... Um, the tabs do come up to the pens, but they don't stick out, and I'm not having any problems. But it's probably about the smallest footprint you can go with a classic without having issues with the tabs sticking out or getting bent. Um, so it's like a compact classic. And in case you aren't familiar with what a classic size is, it's similar to an A5 size. Classic size is a half sheet of letter size paper. All right, so. This is uh, my 2018 planner setup. All right, so let's get into this very detailed tour of my uh, 2000, 2018 planner setup for the month of January. So I am in, as I showed you already, my beautiful classic size uh, vintage Franklin Covey Marbella. This is my unicorn, very happy to have it. The buckle is decorative, it is not functional, which is just fine with me because I like having a buckle for decoration, but I like having a snap closure, which is what this is. Not magnetic snap, but a snap. So I like that. So going inside, the Marbella has a beautiful and simple pocket set up in the covers that I really enjoy. So you see we have four pockets, four card pockets here. So I have Hole reinforcement stickers, Target uh, dollar spot page flags, Avery dots and Avery labels. And this little zipper pocket here, I love that it is not gusseted because that means my cover lays flat. If it were gusseted, it'd probably have a little bulge right here and my top cover would always go up some. So I, I like that uh, it's not gusseted. And since this is an unstructured binder, it doesn't need to be gusseted because it's flexible. So I just have a few dollars in there right now uh, for some planner money. And then we have the side pocket here. And inside this pocket, I've just got various stickers. And uh, the linings on the inside of the pockets, by the way, are uh, green with orange polka dots, which is really cute. Now let me show you my back pockets before we get into the contents of the planner itself. So again, we have a slip pocket back here. As you see, I just have a notepad here. And then we have uh, four card slots here in the back. So I've got some arrows, some tabs, some washi tape, and some note cards and envelopes. All right. And then, yes, this has two pen loops. Um, the planner is, I don't know if you can see that, but right there it says full grain leather. It's a genuine leather. Uh, it's a very nice leather. The pen loops are leather and elasticized on the back, so they will stretch. So in this back pen loop, I just have a... Uh, Pilot Precise V5 in the color black, extra fine. And then in the front pen loop here, I've got a dual tipped Sharpie marker in the color berry. So up here is your regular uh, Sharpie uh, tip, and then down here is a fine tip, 
which is I think it's like a 0.5 it's really fine okay so let's get into the meat of the planner my word for the year 2000, 2018, I gotta get used to saying that, is intention. So I have it written here, and these are just some stickers that I got uh, from Walmart in a sticker pack. And uh, we've had a lot of Chinese food lately, and uh, there was actually two fortunes from some fortune cookies that I liked, so I just popped them on here. It says, you will obtain your goal if you maintain your course, and don't pursue happiness created. And that just really goes with uh, intention, smile every day, count your blessings, no excuses, etc. So this is my front page lifter, and I just have it decorated up and have my word of the year on it. All right, now on the back of my front page lifter, uh, I have a journaling card that I'm covering up. It says, this planner belongs to, and it's got uh, my name, address, phone number, my husband's name, my husband's mobile phone number, etc. Uh, this page here in this Ziploc clear Franklin Covey um, Ziploc type pocket, I just have uh, a little bit of washi tape, love what you do sticker, some scrapbook paper, and a family picture. And then here on the other side of it, I got uh, a picture from my husband and I when we married. Uh, we've been married for 20 years now as of November of 2017. And then I just have a pretty sticker there, and again, it's on some um, scrapbook paper. So I like uh, actually having the pictures in this type of Ziploc closable pocket so that I can change them out whenever I want or add more stickers or change out the uh, background, etc. Okay, now, if you've watched a lot of my planner tours, you know a lot of them contain the Prairie Muffin Manifesto. Um, you can go to archive.org, search up for the archives of the website buriedtreasurebooks.com, go to the archive of the website, look in the left-hand sidebar for the Prairie Muffin Manifesto, and that's where you find it. All right, and this is several pages long, and I decorated it up with some um, Michael's Recollection Washi that I just love. And this brings us to my dashboard that I made. And I just have a variety of different sticky notes on here. And it's just laminated scrapbook paper. And always a good idea is what this little heart says up here. This is a little tab. And I got this tab from a sticker book from Walmart. And then the other side of my dashboard, I have to-do list paper. And uh, these are also from Walmart. Last I checked, it's like 97 cents per paper pad, and you get a pretty thick pad. I haven't bought any for a while because I bought a whole bunch several months back, and I'm using them up, and I love them. And then this is uh, Target Dollar Spot paper. Um, this section here, I keep some paper, currently Target Dollar Spot paper, and it's where I keep uh, my running grocery lists. When I run out of something, I write it there. And uh, usually the day before we get groceries, I will uh, write down anything else from my menu planning that we'll need, and then I rewrite the list in order of the aisles in the store, and then I just have it up front here for when I get my groceries. So I have uh, the extra pages here because I'm about to get groceries, um, in fact, today. So I just have uh, my extra pages here held together with a magnetic bookmark. All right, now we come to my dividers, and these are dividers that I made myself, and I have five of them. All right, and uh, I labeled them with uh, Carpe Diem sticker labels that I got from Hobby Lobby. They're my absolute favorite. So they're labeled Home, School, Budget, Notes, and Planning. And excuse the background noise if you hear it here and there. Um, I'm filming this in the uh, living room. I'm mean, in the dining room at the dining room table because I thought... Since I'm doing such a detailed planner tour, I should really sit down at a table to just give you more of a detailed tour. So like I said, I made these dividers homemade with uh, scrapbook paper and my laminator. And this year I decided I wanted my dividers uh, thin rather than super thick because I didn't want them taking up room in my rings. By the way, if I didn't mention it already, the rings inside this Mar Mar Marbella are not the rings that come with it. I got this originally with um, inch and an eighth diameter rings. I promptly took those out and put in these gold inch and a half oval rings. So I got inch and a half in here and the footprint allows for it fabulously. It works out great for me. So this first divider labeled home is my homemaking divider. Now I also have some top tabs. You can see one sticking up here and little top flags. I'll get to those as I come to them. So home. I got my morning routine. 
my afternoon routine and my evening routine, my night routine and my before bed routine. And here's one of those top tabs I was telling you about. It's just one of those um, label stickers. I think it's by Post-it, I don't remember. I got it from Walmart and stationery section. It's just a stick-on tab, but it's really cute with pink and white polka dots. So I stick it on top of this page because this page is of my daily chores. And so obviously my daily chores, I turn to this page almost every day. And uh, so for ease of turning to the page, I know if I want to flip right to it, I just need to turn to this pink top tab here. And on the other side of this page are my children's cleaning chores and my children's table chores. So if I need to turn to their chores, I know I can just go, turn to this page and flip it over and there it is. Okay, and the next page is my projects for 2018. And then I have an article I wrote. It's called Messy House Rescue. Uh, this is an article I wrote years ago on my blog. Last year, I had my emergency quick clean in here. This year, I thought I'd have in my messy house rescue, which is also a nine-step process. Um, it's for if you're getting over being sick, tis the season for that, or if you've had company over for an extended period of time, etc. in your house, you get behind on your housework. Then the messy house rescue or the emergency quick clean, they are both designed to help you get back on track. All right, and then after that, I got my master grocery list, and there is a little flag sticking off on the side here. This is because if I turn to this page and flip it over, we get to my weekly menu. So that way I can easily turn to this page to find out, okay, what breakfast, lunches, and suppers do I have planned for the week? And obviously, this is another page that I'm turning to every day, so I know what I'm cooking. All right. And then after that, I have breakfast ideas to help me make my menus, lunch ideas, supper ideas. And then after that, we get into my recipes. I just have a little top tab flag here, which helps me turn directly to my recipes, because obviously I turn to this several times a week as well. And uh, my recipes are the rest of this section. I don't have all my recipes in here. Most of my recipes are in my head. And some recipes I only cook rarely, so uh, they're just in cookbooks. Um, but some of my main recipes are in here. So uh, the recipes I have in here for 2018, at least starting out, is granola, egg casserole, biscuits, baked oatmeal, baked pancakes, baked custard, pizza crust, chicken and dumplings, crock pot beef beef stew, uh, sweet spinach salad, ch creamy potato soup, cowboy beans, crock pot chili, hamburger stew, salmon loaf, meat loaf, no noodle lasagna, zucchini casserole, white chicken chili, banana bread, egg bread, ginger cookies, oatmeal cookies, bread stuffing, broccoli marinade, sweet potato casserole, pumpkin pie, coconut vanilla or chocolate custard pie, cabbage salad, election cake, unleavened bread, almond bread, cherry limeade, blondies, cranberry or other types of cobbler, lentils and rice, butternut squash, baked spaghetti squash, baked acorn squash, baked chicken, baked fish, roasted Brussels sprouts, and sweet potato fries. Um, this is actually in an order that works for my brain. I know where to turn to everything, but it's not in a logical order that you'd want to find if you were looking at a cookbook. But it's in the order that works with my brain, and this is all my brain on paper, so it works. Okay, and then after the recipes, I just have uh, some note paper again. This is this Target Dollar Spot note paper. Uh, and that's for writing down new recipes. Um, now, I would probably, if I get a new recipe, if it's short, I'll probably write it here first to fill in this white space, and then I would write recipes here. Okay, now moving to my next homemade divider. It's labeled school. I am a homeschooling mother of four, and so this is my homeschooling section. My oldest has graduated, and then my next to the oldest is in high school, and the next one is in junior high, and the next one is in elementary. So this is my homeschool section. All right, so I've got our homeschool schedule showing the days of the week and what I'm doing, what we're doing for each day, etc. All right, and then I have our homeschool curriculum chart showing the subjects we're teaching uh, for all the kids, when we're teaching them, the books and materials and other info we're using, and that continues on to this other page. I got my children's reading lists. I got their list of their copywork assignments. And then I got uh, some lesson planning work here. So the rest of this is like lesson planning and some note paper. 
All right, my next homemade divider is labeled budget, and as it as the name states, this is my budget section. So I have a top-loading pocket behind this divider that's clear, so I can't show it to you. Uh, that's held closed with a pink paper clip, and I ha I keep bills in there, and I actually have two bills in there um, that are coming up to be paid soon. So I keep bills in there that I'm waiting to pay. All right, and then after that, I have a page that's called Budget Guide, which is also personal. Uh, it's a list of which reoccurring expenses we have, and I divide them up for which reoccurring expenses we pay on which paycheck um, throughout the month. Okay, and uh, after that, I of course can't show you either. I just currently have Target Dollar Spot note paper. I'll just turn to some blank ones here. And uh, this is where I keep the budget. I'll write down the date of that check. I'll look at my budget guide to see what reoccurring expenses we have coming up on that check. I will list them down and their amounts or their guesstimated amounts if I don't know their amounts. Um, and then I will look at my calendar, my monthly calendar, and see is there anything coming up on this check that I need to put in extra expenses for. Uh, I'll consult with my husband. Do we need tires for any of the cars? Um, does he need something specific, etc.? And then that'll get added here too. And then I write the amounts next to them. I total them up so I see this is how much money of the check we will need. And then from there, I can take the leftover money to calculate, okay, this is how much cushion we have, this is how much fun money we have, and this is how much we're going to try to put into savings. So that's how I keep my budget section really simple. I have no need for any inserts. It's just a list. And I also I check the online our online bank often, our online banking statements. And uh, when things clear in the bank, I mark them off. And I always, on the side here, I always keep a running column of what our real total amount is in the bank, regardless of what the bank shows, because the bank, we might be still waiting for something to clear. I already subtract it and have the real total here. So uh, my husband knows um, if we want an accurate amount of how much we really have in the bank, forget about looking at the online bank statement. Just go to my planner and turn to the budget section and turn to the current budget page. All right, and I also budget um, anywhere from two to several checks ahead, depending on how busy things are. Okay, so my next divider that I made is labeled Notes, and that's also just as it sounds. This is my notebook, and you'll see we have a top tab in here. I'll explain to you how that's dividing something in my notes section in a minute. So turning into Notes, I have uh, four little papers here, one for each of my kids. I have a project tracking page. And then I have a table of contents. All the pages after this table of contents up to this purple top tab are numbered. And so I don't keep an ABC file system. I don't have enough stuff to worry about that. But there are things that uh, I need to reference throughout the year. Um, and you'll recognize a lot of these things if you've seen my previous year's planner tours that uh, it's the same things for each year, just updated for the new year. So yeah, and this is the table of contents and what page they're on. So I have gift ideas, watchers parties, that's for uh, Bible study parties that we have, stock list, kids grocery week checklist, family information, perpetual calendar, directions, that's directions how to drive places that I have trouble getting to, and contacts, and that is my phone and address book. Okay, so if I flip Pass all of those to this top tab. We have this is another Target Dollar Spot note page. It's just a, a different design. We have this page. If I flip past that, we have my brain dump, and then also we have more note paper for whenever I need more note paper anywhere in my planner. And I have a whole bunch of this beautiful blue Target Dollar Spot note paper that you've seen. And then behind that. I have uh, several sheets of Franklin Covey uh, Blooms lined paper as well. And so whenever I need more paper for my budget, for homeschool notes, for a grocery list, or anywhere in my planner, I just flip uh, to here and grab the paper. Okay, the last divider that I made is labeled Planning. So obviously this is my planner now. So the first half is uh, basically my home management binder. And the second half is now my calendar and my planning. And I'm going to go into more detail than I ever have before on uh, my planning system and how I do this. Okay, so going inside planning. On the back of the divider, by the way, I just got several sheets. These are post-it sticky notes. Um, 
and I just found this is a good place to stick them. I, I do use these off and on. So I got those right here. This to-do list paper, I'll turn to a blank one. It's for like a running to-do list that has no time constraints. Um, I just kind of stick it there. And then if I need to stick an extra to-do list anywhere in my planner, I can just grab one of these and stick it where I need to. And this is just uh, a Target dollar spot little notepad that I just punched and stuck right in. And then uh, back here, this is the same note paper that I had notes for all of my kids on. And this is just from a little notepad. Um, I think I got it in a stationery set from a bookstore. So, uh, and again, I just punched it and popped it right in. So, all right, and then after that, we have Planner Hints and Helps. And uh, this came with um, the, the calendar and the Dan Two Page set that I got from Franklin Covey, which you'll see in a minute. But I love this page. I like to have it in my planner. It's got fabulous tips. It's got tips on schedule time with yourself for lefties, customizing tabs, space saver, keeping it all together, uh, travel tip, multi-purpose page finders, colorful reminder, frequently called numbers, time saver, etc. Um, and it's just, uh, it's cute. It's got handy information on there. Um, that I like to use. Also, uh, on, I think it's under, yeah, under keeping it all together, it tells you uh, what percentage you need to shrink your documents to if you're printing out for your planner. So, of course, if you're a Monarch user, that's regular letter size. You can just print out like normal. But if you're using half letter size like I am, which is classic size, um, then it'll tell you you need to shrink it to 56%, or if they're using their compact size, you shrink it to 40%. Oh, I'm sorry, 56% for compact, 42% for pocket. And if you're in the classic half letter size like me, you shrink it 64%. So that's approximately what you would shrink for A5 too, by the way. So I like having this info here. All right, and then after this page, this is Bloom's Years at a Glance, and it shows the years 2017 all the way through 2022. Now we're in the meat of my planner. Um, as you may have guessed, I am using Franklin Covey Blooms. All right, and I used uh, for a good part of last year, I also used Franklin Covey Blooms Day on Two Pages, and that's what I'm using again. And I'm going to show you how I use this because this is very handy. Okay, so I have all 12 months for 2018 in here, month on two pages, but I only have three months at a time of Day on Two Pages in here. All right, so looking at January, uh, the front of the divider on every month on two pages in here at the top, it says index important information recorded on this month's daily or weekly notes. Okay, and then if you flip to the front page of the day on two pages, it says index important information recorded on this month's daily notes. So this one says daily or weekly notes, and this one says daily notes. Why? Well, daily notes, because this is day on two pages, so we don't have to say weekly. And this one, it says daily or weekly, because these month on two pages, they're the same month on two pages that come with the day on two pages, or that come with the week on two pages. So uh, that's why they just say daily or weekly. And yes, these two serve the same function. So why the redundancy? For archival purposes. So when you're recording your notes, record the same notes here as you would here. And then when you take out these day on two pages because they're full and you need to make more room in your planner to add another month of day on two pages, you stick these in your archive binder, but you still have your month on two pages here. So if you need to reference something that you've written or archived, then you can either check on the month on two pages here in your planner, or if you're not near your planner or you're closer to your archive binder for whatever reason, then you can turn to this one in your archived binder. That's why we have the redundancy, at least that's why I believe the redundancy is there, and I think that is uh, very wise. You'll notice mine are blank right now. I don't fill these out until the end of the month, all right? And, uh, and sometimes I have nothing on them. I don't record a whole lot of things. Now, people can use these for memory keeping. I use these, I try to use these for events that I think may be something we may need to reference in the future, like, um, if uh, someone got a root canal or something, I might reference that because we might need to know the date of their root canal at the dentist, things like that. Or if, uh, if you know, one of the kids got uh, strep throat or something, I would reference that if it was a strep throat incident, things like that. And when there is something I need to reference, um, I will write it on my day on two pages on the note page. I'll just write it right up here. 
So when I go through all of my pages for the month to find out what I'm archiving, I just have to flip through the pages. When I see something written up here, stop on that page, transfer it, transfer it to here, and then also, of course, to here. So it gets written in twice, which is fine. So yeah, like I said, um, then these won't get filled out until the end of January. All right, so then you go into, you got your January month on two pages. Let me show you a blank, well, blank-ish month on two pages. Um, this one's blank enough. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you see here February um, the 18th, my oldest turns 18. Uh, the 28th, my mom will be turning 70. Um, and then on the second, I need to give a medication to my dog, so etc. So yeah, um, this is I don't have any of my months are blank. None of my months are blank. They all have something on it. But this is blank enough to give you an idea on what the blooms month on two pages looks like. Also, um, you may notice the tabs are different colors for every three months. See, this is a color scheme for January. Okay, for January, February, March. And then we get a different color scheme. This is a color scheme for April, May, and June. I think that's my favorite. And then here's the color scheme for July, August, and September. And the color scheme for October, November, and December. Oh, I do have a blank. October's blank. So there you go. Blank a month on two pages for you. All right. So now flipping back. After we pass my January month and two pages, on the back of all of your month and two pages, you have this. Let me turn to one that I haven't altered yet. Uh, it's uh, two, it's the uh, name of the month and the 2018 master task list. And you have a column for personal and a column for business. Well, what I'm doing for that is personal. Yeah, I'm using that. And I try not to make it too long or daunting. Um, and I try not to be too redundant because this stuff is on my calendars and dailies as well. But on business, I just relabeled it books read. I've never done this before, but I thought it would be fun. So here I'm just going to list the books that I've read. Um, so currently I'm reading uh, as my first book for 2018, um, The Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. Um, I'm very confident that will definitely be finished this month. So when I finish it, I will write it down here. And then... Uh, I think the next book on my reading list, and my reading list is on my blog, by the way, in the right-hand column at eyes2jesus.blogspot.com. The next book on my reading list is um, Worlds in Collision um, by Emmanuel Velikovsky. Very excited to read that book. Um, so I may or may not finish that one in January. It depends on how much time I have for reading. That book is um, going to be longer and more intense. But if I finish it, then that will be the next one written in there. All right, so now... Right, this top tab here is my page finder. So if I flip to that, it brings me to today, my day on two pages. So let me uh, turn you to a blank one, and I'll show you how I use this. Oh, first of all, check out my page finder. Um, this is not a Franklin Covey page finder. I've tried so many times to use a Franklin Covey page finder, but they're, they're slitted too generously, too loose and they fall out of my rings all the time, or if I turn it too fast, it just pops right out. And I've had that happen with three different Franklin Covey page finders, so I think it's actually how they design it. So this is a daytimer page finder. Thing I don't like about the daytimer page finder, though, is uh, up here, it, it's normally it's black and it says today, um, is that uh, the black rubs off so quickly and easily, it scratches off. So I just covered it with uh, stickers and made it cute. All right, and then the bottom here, I just put stickers here because I have this huge, ugly logo and copyright stuff there, and I didn't like that. What I do love about the Daytimers page finders is they snap in, and they stay in until you take them out. And it's got inches and centimeters on them, and I just think that is absolutely fabulous. So let me stick that back on today, and let's move to tomorrow, which is blank. And I'll show you how I use the day on two pages. All right, so you got this, uh, by the way, uh, Franklin Covey's planning system is based off of Benjamin Franklin's planner. You can kind of consider Benjamin Franklin the inventor of the day planner, and this is based off of his planner. You can learn more about that by reading the book that I'm reading right now, The Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. And uh, you can read it for free on the public domain. Um, I just downloaded a free public domain version for Kindle off of Amazon.com. Cost me not a cent. Okay, anyways, this column here is called the Prioritized Daily Task List. So this is where you write down your to-dos. 
Okay, so you write your to-dos here. I like to write it on every other line because I like it's easier to look at my to-dos if there's some white space between them. Sometimes, rarely, every other line gets filled up and then I still have more. Then I'll come up and start writing other to-dos in between uh, on the lines I didn't write on. That rarely happens, but it does happen from time to time. After I write my to-dos, and I do this each night before bed, after I write my to-dos, this column here is called ABC. Then you ABC prioritize them. A being the highest priority, B being not as important, C not as important, etc. I rarely go D or beyond. I'm usually mostly A's and B's. And then this little column here, you have an arrow pointing down on it. This is where you mark it off. And you can follow this key here. There's a key up here and it says a check mark is for completed, a sideways arrow pointing to it is forwarded, an X is deleted. You can put a little letter and a smaller check mark delegated indicating who you delegated it to or you can just put a dot for in process. I almost exclusively am, am using the check mark for done, the X for deleted or the arrow for forwarding. I don't usually do the in process or delegated. Um, if it's delegated but it was still done, I just check it off as done. And if it's in process, I just forward it to the next day instead of putting in process. Okay? Um, and then down here in the daily tracker, this is for tracking whatever you want. Some suggestions they give is expenses, email, voicemail, or other information. Um, if I'm in a weight loss, like if I'm trying to lose a few pounds, then I may track uh, my weight for each day. Uh, if I'm concerned about how much water I'm drinking, I will track how much water I'm drinking. Um, if we have to watch our expenses extra closely, I will track that here as well as in my budget section. Uh, whatever I want to track, I track here. All right, And I'm always tracking something, so this always gets used, even if it's just one line. Okay, and this column here is called the appointment schedule, and it goes from 8 to 8. So generally for most people, that's going to be 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., but I guess if uh, you live on the opposite side of the clock because of a work schedule, this could be 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. So, uh, yeah. But generally, most people, it's 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And uh, usually, I will look at my to-do list, and if there's anything in there that's time-sensitive, well, then I write it in on a slot here. And this is also where I write my appointments. And uh, if I know that day I'm planning is going to be off of my usual routines or my usual schedule, then I will write out the schedule for that day on each line, what I'm doing at each time. And I love that above the 8, we have this blank area here because a lot of times I'm writing down 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. here. And then below the 8 is great because I usually like to you know, write down maybe a 9 p.m. or a 10 p.m. down here. So you have versatility. Okay. And the notes page. All right. Uh, what I do with the notes is up here I will write down my planned breakfast, lunches, and suppers. I will flip back to my homemaking section. All right. And then I will flip to the little tab I have on my master grocery list and then turn past that to my menu. And I'll look at what meals I have planned for that day and then I will write them down here. That way I don't have to flip to there. So it's just a convenience thing. It's a little bit redundant, but I like doing that. Okay, and then after that, I will write down my daily chores. So I will, again, flip to my homemaking section, turn to this tab, and I'll write down my daily chores for the day with, and I put little check marks, check boxes next to my daily chores. And then I'll also flip to my kids' daily chores, and then I'll write down their initial and what chores they have with the check box next to that. Okay, and uh, yeah, so meals, my chores, my kids' chores, and then down here I leave open for more notes. Uh, sometimes I do a food journal if I need to be paying attention to what I'm eating. If so, this section is for a food journal. Uh, sometimes um, if I need to do a quick run to the store, but it's not major groceries, I'll just put my, I'll just write a list here. Uh, and uh, sometimes, a lot of times. One of my tasks on the task list will be kind of big, so I will break it up into sub lists, subtasks over here to check off to help me complete a big task over here. I do that a lot. So that's how I use my Dan Two Pages. Now, a lot of people uh, wonder how to use Month on Two Pages. I, I've seen and heard that a lot in a lot of planner videos. Here's how I do it. So I turn to my blank Month on Two Pages, which is October. Now I know I have a blank one. All right, and what I will do is at the end of the previous month, so for example, this being October, then at the end of September, I would come over and start setting up my October page. What I would do first is I'd write down any appointments that I know I have if I don't already have them here. Uh, if I get an appointment, I will usually uh, immediately write it in on the calendar at that spot the moment I get it. 
Uh, but if I don't have any written yet, but I have some coming up, I will immediately write them down. Um, and then I will write down um, reoccurring things like trash day. I will write down trash day on every trash day because I, otherwise I will forget every time. Uh, I will uh, write down any special occasions or birthdays, which I usually already have written down. So I, say, I write in all the birthdays and everything off of my perpetual calendar for my notes section. I write that at the beginning of the year throughout my calendar. Uh, and then I'll write down, uh, for example, uh, reoccurring classes or things we go to. So uh, we swim, so I write down when we do our swim. Uh, sometimes we have tumbling and gymnastic classes with the kids, so I'll write down what days and what times those are, uh, etc. And by the time I am done, it's usually every single thing in here has something written on there. I might have one or two days with nothing. Um, Saturdays um, or Fridays, depending on our schedule, uh, is date night for my husband and I, so I usually write, write that in depending on what other stuff we have going on, if it's a Friday or a Saturday with a little heart next to it. Um, I, we prefer to do it on Friday nights most of the time. So, yeah, that's what I do. So, <laughs> to, it, to say this in the quick way, what I use a month on two pages for is future planning. And what I mean by that also is, uh, let's say I'm riding in the car and my husband's driving, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, wow, the dashboard is dusty, and uh, we have a bit of trash on the floor. So what I might do is I would turn to the current month we're in, I will look at the days, I'll find a day when I don't have a whole lot going on, and I'll just write down, clean car. And I'll write it down on that day. So it gives me a view of my whole month. When I think of something or see something that needs to be done, I turn to my month on two pages, I find a day where I can see that I can fit it in, and I write it in. And that way I don't have to flip through all my day on two pages to find that day. I just write it in here. And so when I do plan my uh, day on two pages, when I'm planning my day on two pages, uh, one of the very first things I'll do when I start making my to-do list is I'll first I'll turn to the current month and I'll look at that following day that I'm planning for and see if there's anything going on and I'll write that in here. After that, I will turn to the previous day and if there's anything that's been forwarded, then I'll write it here. All right, so that it's forwarded over to the next day. After that, then I'll write down if there's any other things that I want to get done that day or what needs to be done. Most of my to-do list is built from... Oh, here's another blank one. I thought I had something in April. <laughs> okay, most of my to-do list is written from looking at my future planning, what's happening on that day that I've written on my, day on two, on my month on two pages, and then looking at the previous day, what didn't get done, getting forwarded. All right, and then if I have an open day or if it's a slow day, then that's when I will turn to my running to-do list where it's not time sensitive but stuff I want to get done and I'll put one or more of those items on. So that's how I do my planning. I've never really gone into detail on how I've done that before so I thought uh, today would be a good day to do so. Alright, after uh, on my months and days and all that, after that whole section I have a note page, this is a Bloom's note page, and as you see I labeled it Future Planning 2019. So this is where I will write down, obviously it's blank right now because 2018 just started, but this is where I will write down uh, things that we already have scheduled for 2019. Someone's driver's license expiring, um, you know, do we need to renew tags, uh, do we have an appointment that's kind of out there, etc. Uh, and this usually doesn't get much anything, if anything, on it until we're about halfway through the year. So this will be hanging out blank uh, for anywhere for a few to several months before anything will get written on it. And then by the time we get towards the end of the year, this page will usually be pretty filled up. All right. And then after that, I have um, like an, a plastic insert that you can put cards in and stuff. I don't really have much in there right now, as you can see. And then I have another one of those uh, Ziploc type pockets that I have in the front. And right now that's all I have in here is uh, some of the extra Carpe Diem label stickers that I got from Hobby Lobby that I used to label my dividers. And in the back here I have some reoccurring labels, trash, crockpot store, oven, mow lawn that I'll stick uh, on uh, my routines page in my homemaking section um, in the proper spots when these things need to be done for anything special to remind me. And I have two page lifters in the back. There's a purpose and a reason for that. 
Uh, between having such big rings in this binder and it being unstructured, I found when I just had one page lifter, um, I'd still have to pull or shift my pages straight or I couldn't close the planner. But when I put in two page lifters, it gave it enough structure in this unstructured planner that I can close it now fairly just fine. Um, that's all I gotta look out for. Sometimes my page lifter wants to get its corner inside this pocket here. So, yeah, here I will show you. So I'm flipping it here to close. See, and it wants to be like that. All right? But with my two page lifters, I can just shift it really easily now. With the one page lifter, I'd have to open it up and pull on my pages, see? And it works. And there's that beautiful snapping sound. Um, be, and before ending this, I'll just answer a few questions I know some people are going to have about the leather on the Marbella. Okay. To me, the, the like best planner in, in Final Facts world is bar none, they're Malden. It's unstructured, it's a nice leather, and it feels fabulous. And to me, the absolute best planner uh, for daytimer is their Malibu, because can you guess? I like unstructured. It's a fabulous feeling leather and it's unstructured. So, Franklin Covey, I can't find very many unstructured binders. Sure, they have a zip unstructured that's for sale on their, on their website right now. So if you like zip around unstructured, they have one. But uh, I prefer snap unstructured. So that's why for actually years now, I've been trying to get a Marbella. Okay. Um, and blue, I don't know why. Red is my favorite color, but I like the various different blues for my planner colors as my number one choice. It's really funny. I don't know why, but I just love how it looks. So, how does the unstructuredness uh, and the leather compare to the Malden and the Malibu? Um, well, the unstructuredness, the floppiness is comparable. It's fairly the same. Uh, as for the feel of the leather, well, they all three are very high-grade, genuine leather. The Malden, the Malibu, and the Marbella. And they all three start with M. Hmm. But they're all three very different kinds of leathers. So it's going to depend on if you're picky on leathers or not. Um, I think the Malden has the best feel when it comes to bending it and flexing it. But I think the Malibu has the best feel just for rubbing it, but it is pebbled with the Malibu, and some people don't like that. Um, the Marbella has a good flex, and it has a good feel, and uh, I have no problems with it. Um, it's a, it, what I like about it is I feel like the Marbella uh, full grain leather is more durable than both the Malden and the Malibu. So while it might not quite be as petable, it's, it's really coming across to me as um, it seems like it's more durable. Um, so, yeah, I'm pleased with it and have no issues with it. Marbellas are very rare and very hard to come by. I have been um, perusing planner groups, various planner websites, eBay, even Amazon, because sometimes you can find some interesting used ones that people put up on Amazon. Um, you know, anything I could. For years before I finally found this one, and this is the one I've wanted. So, this is my vintage Franklin Covey Classic Size Marbella, and this concludes my detailed 2018 planner setup.